I'm going to do something a bit different here, Ravi. Um, we know the numbers. The outlook's good. I actually just want to talk a bit more about the platform and where this growth's going to come from beyond restaurants into new product categories, because I think that's a real point of emphasis for a lot of investors this morning. So give me the near and long-term future of how you're going to be driving that growth. Absolutely. Ed. Yesterday, somebody on the media said, we are redefining convenience. That's truly what you are seeing on the platform. We went from being one product in one country to be multiple products in over 30 different countries. We're really excited that more than 20% of our users today look to DoorDash to order their groceries, convenience, retail products. And that was just up from 0% just a few years ago. And we are doing this successfully in over 30 countries where the demand has been overwhelmingly positive. But Ravi, is it a specific category? You know, I think about the types of things you use an app-based service to get to you conveniently, right? Is it alcohol delivery? Is it cosmetics, beauty, fashion even? What are the areas where you think, okay, we're gonna get big on this area? Grocery has been a large component for us. We have more number of users at today ordering grocery than ever before, and they're ordering more times than ever before. And the reason is we've increased the selection. In the, on the East Coast, we've added major brands such as Ahold and Wakeford. The improvement in selection is what you're seeing driving the growth in grocery. At the same time, retail is an exciting part. Consumers are very excited about getting their products instantly when they order beauty products from Sephora or Ulta Beauty, which are other major brands that we've added. Number two, what we're seeing is the strength in new verticals, which is categories outside of restaurants, continues to be strong, not just in the US, but in many of our international markets as well. So you're seeing strength, not just in grocery, you're seeing strength in retail, you're seeing strength in beauty, alcohol, many categories you know, outside of our core restaurants business, while the restaurants business continues to grow quite nicely as well. I think back to the earlier days of covering Uber and this obsession with adjusted EBIT. There was just, trust me, there was an obsession. The question for DoorDash is on operational profitability. You've given a pledge before on timeline. What's the latest? Our financial North Star is driving long-term free cash flow per share. You're seeing the business do really well and continue to drive free cash flow higher. When I measure and monitor the business, to me, free cash flow is truly the health of the business. And when you look at adjusted EBITDA as well, that's at an all-time high. Ravi, you and I have discussed the sort of technology side of the business as well. How do you scale by adding merchants, using incentives in a way that doesn't kind of impact the, the, maybe the, the more profitable side of the business on the back-end solution side of things? The key for us, Ed, is scale is what drives profitability in the business. We have more than 37 million consumers that shop with us every single month. What we see is when we add new categories, the overall engagement on the platform goes up. We are making the app more personalized. When you search for something on DoorDash today, we remember your preferences, and the search results reflect what you preference on DoorDash. All of this ultimately is driving users to come back more often. They spend with us a lot more. We are driving value not just to consumers, but also to merchants. And you're seeing us driving growth for merchants as well. The combination of all this is what's driving ultimately the growth as well as the profitability in the business.